I recently helped take a client Squarespace website from a Google performance score of 71 up to 90. And I figured out a few things along the way that were very tied to some specific Squarespace, pretty much design features. And I wanna show you what those are so you can avoid using them on your own website so that you can have that performance score. Ultimately, you wanna have it above 90. Let me show you a little tidbit here. So basically Google performance it's measuring your website's speed and performance. I know that's saying the same thing really, but you want to have a score that's above 90. And we're gonna do that a lot by focusing on what's at the very top of your homepage. So if you're looking at the speed, you want the top of your homepage to load very quickly. And if you're using some of these pretty general Squarespace features, it could be slowing down your performance and getting you a poor score. And in the case of my client, he was running Google Ads and noticed that his performance was lower than some of his competitors and obviously wanted to change that. So we have, and we got him up to a 90. I believe my own website scores are like a 91 or 92. So I'll show you that as well. If we haven't met, I'm Catherine Forbes, founder of Designing the Row. I design Squarespace websites. I've designed over 250 client websites at this point. So. I've seen a thing or two when it comes to Squarespace and websites. I love Squarespace and all the design features it has to offer, but now I'm learning that some of them are hurting our scores and our performance. So I'm gonna uncover what those are. There are four things I wanna share with you today and they're related to your desktop score. And then I'm gonna make this a series. So we'll do another video and I'll go over your mobile score, which is actually a little harder to improve. So we'll look into that. And then I'm gonna make a third video about some of the things that Squarespace is just gonna do. And we can't help it. There's nothing we can do about it. You're just gonna to have to let it ding your score a few points. So I will cover what those things are, what you see in your report, and maybe what you just keep scrolling past and knowing there's nothing that you can do about it. So today, the four things slowing down your Squarespace website. First, you need to know what your score even is. So I use Chrome. Let's do this in an incognito window so nothing, like no plugins or anything are gonna mess up your score here. If you go to File, New Incognito Window, that will open up your incognito window. I already have my website pulled up over here in an incognito window. So to get your performance score, all you have to do is go to View, Developer, Developer Tools, and this little Lighthouse Report pop-up will come over on the right side. I'm going to just, for the sake of time, uncheck these three boxes. So we just have performance checked, and I'm gonna change device from mobile to desktop, and we're gonna hit analyze page load. It'll kind of take control of your screen a little bit, scroll through things, analyze it, and it is gonna spit out a report for us and show us what we're doing well, what maybe we're not doing well, and give us some really uh, specific ways that we can improve our score. So here you can see I've got a score of 92 on my Designing the Row homepage. Here you can see a score of 90 to 100 is gonna be ideal. 50 to 89, you'll be in the yellow zone, it'll be all right. And then you definitely don't wanna go under 50 in that, that red zone here. If I scroll down, you can see it's giving me some metrics of what I'm doing well, what I'm doing okay. And then down here, some red stuff. We're not gonna look at that too much right now. I'm gonna go into the four specific things that I figured out that really were tanking the score that quickly got us from that 71 to the 90. So maybe if you're doing those, instead of trying to decipher what all of this means, you can just go turn on or off these features and boost your score as well. So let's come back over here to my site. The first thing that we're gonna look at is sadly, I say sadly because I love this feature, but using it at the very top of your home page is not great. And that is the scale text. And we can call it like a text effect feature. I love using this feature. I actually did a video recently on some text effects that I like to use. Well, I guess we can't use this one anymore, at least not at the top of our home page. Your home page, the top of your home page, we call it the hero section or maybe like what's above the fold. So basically before you scroll down what you see. That's the most important because that's what loads first. So that's what Google's gonna score you on. And if you use some of these features, it delays the load time of 
particular in this case, your text. So let's type in scale text. Let's say I want this to be really big on my screen. So I'll put it at header one, but maybe that's still not big enough for me. So what I'd like to do is this little icon right here, the A with the brackets around it, will actually scale your text up to whatever size the box is that you give it. And I personally like using this like at the top of a home page because it makes the text really stand out, right? Well, the way that Squarespace loads this feature, it loads the text in and then it loads the effect and Google counts that as a delay and it does not like it at all. So if you were using this at the top of your home page and your Google performance score isn't where you want it to be, I would recommend, unfortunately, not using this scale effect feature. The next thing that we want to talk about is going to be site-wide animation. Again, something super sad because it can make your site look pretty cool. Uh, rather than just flat text, flat images, as you kind of scroll down the page, it loads things with an animation. So if I come into site styles and then miscellaneous at the bottom and then to animations, for my client, he specifically asked for some sort of animation and we chose the scale option. This isn't gonna do much because my page doesn't have much on it. Let's see, if I go from none to scale, again, watch what happens when I scroll down the page, watch the text in the footer just kind of like scale up as I scroll. Did you see that? So since we had that on his site, it kept telling me like this, the tagline wasn't loading fast enough. And I was at first pretty confused. Like it's just basic like header two text. Why is it not loading fast enough? And then I realized that we had this animation tool turned on or the animation feature turned on. And so while it was loading, it was loading on scroll and that wasn't fast enough for Google. So once I turned off the animations, the site-wide animations, again, we boosted that performance score. So sad day again for the design and user experience of your website, but if you want that Google performance score, it's time to turn off the Squarespace site-wide animation tool. Okay, moving on to number three is background videos. Again, these are all just like such big hits to the design features that I love to use and that are pretty popular these days. I know you've landed on a website, maybe yours even has it. When you land on the website, the top of the homepage, there's a background video. It's a great way to add interest, to add some visual movement, to show people what your business or your brand is all about without using words. I love having background videos at the top of a homepage, but again, Google does not. It's a large file size, at least larger than an image. And sometimes if the device can't load it, then we're gonna run into some more problems. And specifically along those lines, when I tried to make my client's background video work, it was a very like short video clip. It wasn't large file size. What Google is wanting is a fallback image. So if the, the video doesn't load fast enough, they wanna have an image to pop up instead. Well, Squarespace gives us the ability to load in a mobile fallback image, but it doesn't have an option for a desktop fallback image. So therefore, we're going to have to cross background videos at the top of our websites off this list and um, go for the Google Performance Score instead. Now, if you don't care about the Google Performance Score, you're probably not watching this video anymore, but again, these are all things that, that are up to you. Like, your website will still work. It will still look great if you have all these things, but if performance score and speed is at the top of your list, then these are the things that you need to keep in mind. Now, before we continue on, you see I've got designingtheroad.com slash free down here. If you are looking to improve more than just the performance and the speed of your homepage and you want to Im improve what it actually says, I have just released a new tool I'm really, really excited about to help you write your homepage copy in just minutes. It's a free AI powered tool that I've created. I've basically trained it. I've given it everything that's in my brain and trained it so that it will ask you four questions about your brand or your business. And then it will take the way that I formulate a homepage, the way I structure a homepage, not only for your users to convert them into buyers and customers, but also to help you rank in Google. So it's gonna help you with your SEO as well. So everything, that you need for your homepage as far as copy goes 
answer four questions and immediately you will get a draft of your homepage copy. Just go to designingtheroad.com slash free and you will get that. I know this is .squarespace.com, but don't worry about that. This is the editing version of my website, designingtheroad.com slash free. Put your name and email in here and you will get instant access to try this tool out and improve more than just, you know, some design features here about your homepage. Because at the end of the day, performance is sure is great, but people don't care about uh, performance if they can't understand who you are and what you're doing and what you're selling. So that all comes with words. So again, designingtheroad.com slash free if you want to check that out. Definitely no pressure there. Just wanted to, to share that with you because I'm really excited about it. So the last thing here on our list is large Im image file sizes. So this is going to be a little bit different for desktop and mobile, but in my opinion, I think we should just go with the mobile size for um, because it can work for both desktop and mobile, so why not just knock it out for both? The file size that you want to keep it between is going to be, they say about 200 kilobytes for mobile and 400 or so for desktop, so I figure why not just go for the 200? Um, you could optimize for desktop, but then when you go look at the mobile, it's going to tell you to go even smaller. So we might as well just go ahead and start with the 200, right? So that is the file size that you're going to want to put if you have any images on your homepage, which you should. For example, let's go ahead and look at, if we go to my homepage, let's see, it's over here. You can see I have this background image here of like a computer laptop keyboard. We want to make sure that that image is appropriately sized because if it takes too long to load, again, it's at the very top of my home page and Google's not going to like if it takes too long to load. So you can size these images before you upload them. If you are curious as to what sizes your images are that you already have on your website, I'm going to come back in here to my sidebar. We're going to go to home and then let's go into assets right here currently under website. And if I, let's see, let's just pick a random image. If I come to this therapy website, YouTube thumbnail, I click these three little dots, come to file details, it will show you the file size. So you can see this one is gonna be perfect for both desktop and mobile. We'll come back here, let's pick another one. Let's see how I did on this one. File details, perfect, 111 kilobytes. So if you're questioning some content that you already have on your website. If you want to know what the sizing of those files are, this is a quick and easy way to look at that. Go back to our page here. So in summary, let's come back in here. The scale text effect feature, don't use it at the top of your home page or any page that you want to boost performance and speed. Site-wide animation, just turn it off. It's not going to be friendly with the Google performance. Background videos, avoid using at the top of your pages to boost your performance. I'm building one right now and for this exact reason I've put it like the third it's the third section on the home page because I want to include a background video. I love the effect that it gives. It's a great visual to have on a home page, but we don't want it to slow down our performance score or the speed of our website. So I layered it a little bit lower on the page so we can still get the benefits, the visual benefits of it, but um, keep our performance score as high as possible. And then again, your large image file sizes, keep those as small as possible and we might as well just optimize for mobile while we're at it. So again the next video is going to be all about how to optimize for mobile. These things are all still applicable but there's going to be a few more detailed things that we can do to boost the mobile performance so it's going to be very important these days because so many people are browsing on their phone. So let me know what you think about all these features, if you're sad that any of them have to be turned off for your site, I know I was sad. This was basically like the whole top homepage section for the client that we had. So I had to turn all these things off, um, make it pretty flat, pretty basic. 
which is sad for me as a designer, but you know, we got to get that performance score up. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. I hope you will subscribe, like, comment, stick around for next week's video all about uh, mobile performance, and I will see you in the next one.